So I have another interesting question from Chris. So Chris basically asked what's the difference between normalization and uh, min-max scaling. Anamika, our new teaching assistant, did a pretty good job in explaining that. But then Chris had another question. So let's first uh, start with explaining you the difference here in the video. So min-max scaling is pretty straightforward. So let's have a look at uh, min-max scaling. So you take, first of all, you need to find out the minimum and the maximum value in your data. Let's consider we have a data set which contains five, seven, and 10, okay? So the minimum value is five and the maximum value is 10. So let's have a look what happens with, with seven. So seven, then if you have seven minus five, you have two and 10 minus 5 is 5, so it's 2 over 5, then we get, uh, I think, 0 0.4 or something? Yeah, 0 0.4. Okay, so that means we have always here in this formula a guarantee that the value is between 0 and 1. That's a pretty nice feature. So we use the feature of the formula to scale our features between 0 and 1. There is also in the SparkML documentation an extension to that formula where you can specify the minimum, minimum and maximum value of your desired output. That means you can also specify that the output should be between, should be between 0 and 100, for example. And as you can see here, if you are using the default values 0 and 1, you basically have max minus min, so that's um, 1 minus 0, that's 1, plus min, that's still 1, and if you multiply something by 1, you get basically this formula here, and this formula here, let's increase the size a bit, not working, uh, so this formula here is basically the same, we have just seen, okay? So now let's have a look at the normalization function. And if we have a look at the Spark documentation, then it says it uses the so-called P norm, okay? So if we have, and it uses uh, P equals 2 by default, so let's keep that in mind. So you have a vector as an input, and it computes the norm of the vector, okay? Keep that in mind that you have a vector. So if we have a look at the definition here, um, this is the vector and those double bars are the, the symbol for the p-norm and p stands for the parameter p. And here you basically just take the value or the element of each vector, you, you use the exponent p and then you sum those values up and later you just take the, um, use the exponent 1 over p, okay? So, if you have p equals 2, you get the Euclidean distance. Let me show that to you. So let's consider p equals 2. That means you square each element of the vector and later on you take the square root because taking uh, using the exponent 1 over 2 is basically the square root. So you see that here, you have here x1 squared plus x2 squared and so on, and then you take the square root of everything, okay? And that's also defined as the Euclidean distance. And now, since you asked, um, where was the question? Ah, since you asked here, so you're confused because you used p1, and then um, you say it's, it, it just divides by the absolute vector sum. So this is not 100% correct, because if you use p equals 1, you get the so-called Manhattan or taxi cap norm, and that's basically just summing up all individual values of the vector, which is pretty clear if you consider p equals 1. So you are taking the exponent uh, 1, that's basically the identity function. And also if you take the exponent 1 over 1, it's also the identity function. So basically just only this sum symbol here is taking effect and that's uh, the Manhattan distance if you just sum up all elements, okay? Um, I hope this helps. If you have more questions, just post it down below or in the forum.